Does mechanically piercing a brisket with hundreds of tiny blade cuts make it more tender and juicy? I'm testing it out in this video by comparing a brisket mechanically tenderized with a jacquard device with a control brisket prepared and cooked normally. Is the jacquard the next big thing for helping you cook the perfect brisket? We're gonna find out in this video, so let's get smoking. Brisket is a very tough cut of meat made up of an immense amount of interconnective tissue made of collagen. In fact, cooking brisket is largely an exercise in masterfully tenderizing collagen, and to do that, we need to render the collagen, weaken it, and substantially convert it into gelatin. We do that by cooking the brisket for a long enough period of time at a high enough temperature so that the collagen weakens and partially converts into gelatin. This process is known as collagen rendering, or if you want to get scientific, you can call it hydrolysis, which basically means a reaction in the presence of water. So in most cases, we use those three factors, water, temperature, and time to make a really tender brisket. But there are other ways to do it as well. One of them is mechanical tenderization using a device like this jacquard. A jacquard, for those who don't know, is a kitchen device with 48 tiny razor sharp blades that can be pressed into the meat to cut through the muscle and fat and connective tissue and mechanically tenderize it. According to modernist cuisine, jacquarding makes meat more tender by cutting some but not all of the meat fibers so the meat is more tender to the bite but it retains its original mouthfeel and allegedly it also increases the juiciness which is not what you'd expect because if you're cutting a whole bunch of tiny holes into a piece of meat you'd expect the juices to flow out of them but in fact in modernist cuisine they found that it actually retains moisture by weakening the connective tissue so that the collagen can't shrink up as much during the cook and squeeze out more moisture. It also may help increase juiciness by releasing more myosin from the muscle cells, and that myosin tends to interact with the juices in the brisket and thicken it up so it prevents the juices from leaking out. So that all sounds great. We just tap, tap, tap with the jacquard and the meat is magically more tender and juicy. I have no doubt that it works on something like chicken breast or steak which might be a little bit more lean and doesn't have a lot of interconnective tissue, but does it work on something like a brisket? I don't know, that's why we have to do an experiment. And for this experiment, I'm jacquarding a full packer brisket choice grade by pressing the jacquard into the top of the brisket perpendicular to the length of the brisket all the way from the flat to the point. Then I'm turning the jacquard parallel to the brisket and pressing it all over the top of the brisket. I'm then flipping it over and repeating that pattern on the other side. Now I'm seasoning the brisket with salt and pepper, approximately a quarter cup of kosher salt, a quarter cup of coarse pepper, and two tablespoons of Lowry's seasoned salt. Just a really basic rub. Then the brisket is going to dry brine overnight in the fridge covered in plastic wrap. The next day I weighed and then smoked the experimental jacquarded brisket in Big Beefy Luigi, my Yoder trailer smoker, and I also smoked several other control briskets that were prepared the exact same way as the experimental brisket, but they just weren't jacquarded. When the briskets reached at least 190 internal everywhere I probed, I removed them from the smoker and I wrapped them in foil using the Goldie's method of wrapping with two sheets of foil, and then I used beef tallow mixed with ghee in the wrap. Next, I placed the briskets in my CVAP holding oven to hold for 15 hours at 150 degrees. I don't rest my briskets down before they go in the holding oven, by the way, and that's because I pull my briskets at 190 when they're still a little bit tough, so I rely on carryover cooking and the long hold to finish them. The next day, I weighed all of the briskets again to calculate the moisture loss, and I got ready for an admittedly really quick taste test because I was prepping for an event where I was going to feed 200 people, so I had to be fast. But before we get to the taste test, I'd like to thank Z-Biotics for sponsoring this video. If you're anything like me, you probably hate feeling miserable the day after having a few drinks. Luckily, Z-Biotics is here to help. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in your gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it the most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. 
I've been taking Z-Biotics for just over a year now, and I feel like it helps me feel a little bit more motivated and able to tackle the next day after having a couple drinks, which is extremely important to me as a busy dad with a full-time career. And I've actually got another little one on the way later this year, so I'm gonna be even more busy. Labor Day weekend is right around the corner, so make sure you stock up before the long weekend. Your friends and family will thank you. Go to zbiotics.com forward slash smoke trails BBQ or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use smoke trails BBQ at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com forward slash smoke trails BBQ and use code smoke trails BBQ at checkout for 15% off. Also, if you want a chance to win a free Zbiotics 12 pack, then there's instructions on how to enter the contest in the description section below. It's going to run for 14 days after the posting date of this video, so make sure you sign up for that free chance to win that free 12 pack, which is a great opportunity. I ran a contest in the last video, and a lucky viewer is getting sent a 12 pack of Zbiotics right now. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. All right, guys, I have the Jacquard brisket here. This is going to be a really quick taste test because I'm prepping for a large event where I'm feeding 200 people in about 30 minutes and I have to leave in about 30 minutes, so I'm gonna do this really quickly. So this just came out of the holding oven. We're going to slice it right down the middle. Give you guys a look here. It's looking pretty juicy, I think. Looking pretty decent. Let's take a slice of the flat. So I'll pull it apart. It pulls apart effortlessly. It's very tender. Let's do a slice of the point here. The point on this one is a little bit weird. We'll do half of the point. Okay, here's the point. Pulls apart pretty nicely, pretty much like a regular brisket. So it's really good. I'm gonna compare it against another brisket that I cook normally now. So here's a piece of the flat of the control brisket. Pulls apart really nicely. Tastes really tender. And a piece of the point. Pulls apart really nicely. Tastes really tender. So I'm not really noticing a difference in terms of tenderness on the Jacquard brisket. So that was a quick taste test, but I trust my first impressions and I don't really think that the jacarded brisket was any more tender than any of the control briskets. And that makes sense. We're cooking the brisket for a long enough period of time to a high enough temperature that it's getting really tender anyway. We usually take a brisket till it's probe tender. You can pull it apart with very little resistance. Is the jacarding gonna be noticeable when we're cooking it to that much tenderness anyway? And also, if we wanted to get it more tender, we could just cook it for longer until more of the collagen dissolves. So I don't think jacarding will help very much in terms of tenderness if you're cooking a brisket the traditional way. Also, the jacarded brisket did not hold on to more water as modernist cuisine suggested. It lost 42% of its water weight while the control briskets only lost 39% on average. So actually they were pretty close, but the control briskets retained even more moisture than the jacarded brisket. And there could be a couple reasons for this. The control briskets were a little bit larger. They had a larger starting weight than the jacarded brisket. So it's possible that a larger brisket stays juicier than a smaller brisket when you're cooking it. Also, there's a potential sample size issue. I only did one jacarded brisket. I could have done three and then we would have got probably better results and maybe that would have trended the average moisture retention a little bit higher than the control briskets. But in this experiment, the moisture retention factor wasn't really there. But that being said, as with many things in the barbecue world, experiences may differ. And someone in my Patreon community, Johnny Lemons, actually jacarded a brisket and had the opposite results that I did. He jacarded a brisket and it was the best tasting brisket he ever made. The difference is when he jacarded his brisket, he let it dry brine in the fridge for a couple days. I only did it overnight. So it's possible that all those extra holes that we're adding into the brisket by jacarding it 
is creating pathways for the salt to penetrate deeper and the brining process to happen a lot faster and that could produce a better tasting brisket. That might have been the experience that he had whereas I only did it overnight and I didn't give it enough time to dry brine. So it is possible that jacquarding speeds up the brining process and makes the brisket more tasty by allowing more salt into it but that's an experiment for another video. Another potential application is cooking a brisket kind of like a steak or sous vide it to a very low temperature. Usually, if you cook a brisket to a low temperature, like a steak, for example, on the grill, it would be so tough. It would be inedible because there's so much unrendered collagen in it. But if you use the jacquard to mechanically tenderize that collagen and then cook it like a steak, could you get a really tender brisket that is cooked to medium rare? That would be a completely different flavor experience than a traditionally cooked brisket. That is also for another video. But I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Would you ever jacquard a brisket or do you have any ideas for future experiments you wanna see on my channel using a jacquard? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video and happy smoking.